Adam is the story of a robot character who has a human brain, who has been imprisoned in a robotic shell and expelled from the society that harvested the rest of his body and put his brain into this metallic chassis and kicked him out. And he was expelled along with a whole other host of prisoners that have been harvested the same way. I was interested in directing several pieces that build on the story and the setup scene in the first Adam piece. So that was very appealing to me. And uh, it also brought with it not just the creative um, world exploring part of developing Adam, it also brought a whole bunch of unique technological um, elements that we would be incorporating into the way that we made it. And the reason that I was excited to work with Unity is, is primarily because I have just been obsessed with real-time graphics since I was 16. I love the idea of um, environments that you can explore at 60 frames per second, real-time simulation, real-time lighting. Unity is what real-time future virtual cinema is. The first Atom that came out uh, kind of knocked people's socks off. I think people were pretty shocked by it. It kind of came out of nowhere. Um, visually, it looked fantastic, super intriguing, massive cliffhanger. People were like, well, what is this story? The thematic backbone of it is a discussion about where your soul is, what defines you, is it the fact that you are physically a human? If your brain exists in a vat, are you still a human? If your brain were in a vat, do you think that you're a human? I love working with Neil. You know, I've worked with him for years now. I think our brains work on at some level on a similar wavelength, so we kind of get each other. Um, so there's a lot of shorthand between us in terms of um, artistically where he wants to take things. I love that head down, but still forward. Yeah, in that zone, we're, we're cool. You know, Somehow, somehow that other side felt better than this one there. The environment at the studio here is ridiculously creative. We want, it's not just a place for Neil to be creative, it's a place for all of the artists to be creative. And, and something special comes out of that. I'm a nerd, so like I'm a total sci-fi fantasy nerd. I remember the first day walking in here and seeing what was the beginnings of this place and trying really hard to act grown up about it. Like really trying hard to act like an adult and not just like literally like vibrate with excitement because there was so much cool stuff around here. The vibe, the vibe working here is not like working. <laughs> A lot of people said that before, like, you know, what's gonna be like working brother or blah, 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 but I think we have a pretty good understanding of the respective roles, like, within what we do. Uh, and to that, it's been awesome, actually. What's well, a good studio executive? Decision I've <laughs> made. He's Filmmaking. maybe 5% more nerdy than a normal studio executive, but it's totally gonna be on me, I think. No one would describe him as a nerd. Relatively speaking, there's a very big nerd gap it's between, massive, the, two. Massive <laughs> between the two. Yeah. The environment that we're trying to create for Adam is uh, very, very, very distinctly broken into two different environments. You're dealing with, with Earth after, after a human-caused war that turned into a reliance on technology that led to an AI-enhanced war. The first 50% is the characters that would be considered good in a dark environment. And then the second half of the script are the, the more evil characters represented in a completely sun-bleached, bright environment. And they're complete polar opposites from one another. So um, the, the thing that's exciting about the world that we're trying to create is that we're, we're building something that I think, especially the second half, is gonna look as close to real, I'm hoping, as we can get to in a, in a real-time engine. The only really way to do that is to digitize <laughs> real life somehow. Photogrammetry is where you, you take photos of a real life environment, um, you know, data crunch that down, and then you can load that back up into a computer. That whole virtual production aspect of this is super exciting because, I, you know, I've been dreaming about it for 15 or 20 years. So to finally start seeing the pieces come together is super exciting. With high definition facial capture, with a very dense polygonal environments and with lots of characters is going to be absolutely maxing out the, the allotted amounts of computational power that we have. The experimental nature of Adam is super exciting. I love, I love new tech, I love 
I love taking the risks, to be honest. Trying to push the envelope is part of, it's like an adrenaline rush. Pushing the envelope is part of what's exciting about the whole thing. It's that excitement or that unknowing Building some what the hell it is, yeah, exactly. That you're trying to achieve something that makes it exciting and makes all the battles worthwhile. <laughs> it's, not, it's not easy. It's for sure not easy. Heel and toe on the ground. Kick forward. There's two methods that we've employed that I think are not completely normal in the realm of real-time graphics. One is to do with locations and one is to do with the actor's performance. I think for sure the most difficult aspect has been uh, dealing, trying to come up with real-time photoreal humans. Um, that will, I mean, that'll be the, you know, the issue that I think everybody working in computer graphics for the next, the next 20 years is going to be dealing with. Swear to me that it is better to kill a man enslaved to a machine than to let him live and suffer. What we're doing, and this is the part that's like slightly, slightly weird, is we're, we're scanning them in 3D at high resolution, 60 frames a second. So we have, we have 60 different faces that have nothing to do with one another, that look like sculptures moving from one face to another face to another face to another face, and over, over time sped up, like classical animation, form the words that they're saying or the, uh, you know, the emotions that they're expressing. And then we've got to figure out, well, how do we take that data and then put that back onto the face that's on the rest of the body? And we're so trained on what humans look like from birth, you don't want to get into this weird zone of the uncanny valley, it's just creepy. We happen to be capturing an emotional performance in 3D, and I know her performance is really good, and I'm curious to see how that ends up looking on a real-time character that people would normally associate with, with a game. You know, that's an interesting mixture. So um, those are the elements I'm really curious to see how they play out. These are the most bizarre days I've ever had at work, which is like the best because it's, it's so, you know, it's, so unusual to not have the constraints of all these other things. Like to me, this is just, it is imaginative, it's creative, and it has really no bounds. So with the, with the photogrammetry, um, we, we use it in particular the prophet's domain. In the story, um, I mean, we're in the future and, and you know, the world has been sort of turned into a wasteland and this is sort of this, Oasis. We went down to this location um, in the desert. We spent three days there taking 20 to 30,000 photos, both on land and also we had uh, a drone team that was flying around doing aerial stills as well. So this, uh, this Inspire, um, Inspire 2 is just shooting, it's shooting our photogrammetry grid right now. But interestingly, this is just a sequence of waypoints on a grid, we end up with a bunch of pretty precise photos that we can turn into 3D files later. So it's assembling all that data and all that information and creating essentially the exact representation of what we saw on the day. But when we're in the motion capture studio and using a virtual camera, for me it was really trippy to like be standing with the camera and looking and seeing something on a screen which was ex almost identically representative of what I actually stood on the ground on the day and looked at, like yeah. in that light. The biggest um, hurdle or roadblock for us is how do we get our data into the engine? The Unity's gotten behind that and they've, they've invested in the Alembic support. Suddenly that door is opened up and that bridge is laid and now we have that access point where we can get data in. I almost feel like I'm, like it's unfair, like I feel like I'm not even working it so fast. I can just move things around and it's instant feedback. So Unity's timeline um, lets us fill a folder full of your files and you can start dragging and dropping that content right into your, right into your scene. Simultaneously, the animation team is, is doing final animation, but everybody else can still work as opposed to the old linear pipeline where, you know, it's a waterfall with each department has to finish before you can move on to the next uh, stage. So it's cool that it's such a fluid kind of development experience. And I'm like, hey man, can you hit play? And we watch, because it's real time, we watch the piece live and it's got everyone's updates. I, it, I don't think we could do what we're doing without timeline. Already, like in the last decade, the line between game and film and television are all sort of slowly merging. There could be as much narrative 
in a game as there is in a film. It feels as though it's a democratization of this technology. You could also do it uh, as someone in your garage, you know, using some kind of low-cost motion capture system and start creating your own, your own worlds. This project is a little bit different from the other the other projects that I've done because I kind of know what to expect and we can we can guide them like traditional films. This is interesting because it's the first time I've ever done it and you're kind of watching it become more real, like these layers of paint um, in a process that is just new and, and interesting to me. And I'm excited to see where it ends up, like I'm genuinely curious.